Hello everyone. So today we are going to learn on aerobic respiration. Okay. So I hope you are ready and let's do this. Okay. So as usual, we have to go through the learning objectives first. Okay. So first, you have to be able to conceptualize energy production from glucose during aerobic respiration in cells. Then you should be able to write a word equation for aerobic respiration in cells and also conduct an experiment to study aerobic respiration. Okay, 7.2.3 we are not going to do today because we can't conduct any experiment. But you should be able to achieve 7.2.1 and 7.2.2 from this lesson. Okay? So, before we begin, let's recap our previous lesson. If you haven't watched the video, please do so and then come back to learn more. Now, in 7.1, we have learned that cell uh, cellular respiration is divided into three. Aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration, and also fermentation. Aerobic respiration occurs in the presence of oxygen, and anaerobic respiration occurs in the absence of oxygen. So, you get that right. And in this uh, subtopic, we are going to concentrate on aerobic respiration. Okay, so what is aerobic respiration? Aerobic respiration is the breakdown of glucose involving oxygen to produce carbon dioxide, water and energy. Aerobic respiration is divided into two stages here. The first one is glycolysis, which occurs in the cytoplasm of a cell. And second is oxidation of pyruvate, which occurs in the mitochondria. So, aerobic respiration begins with the glycolysis process. The cell needs to be able to harvest glucose to be able to get the energy ATP. Whether oxygen is present or not, cell can always undergo glycolysis, which occurs in the cytoplasm. Now, what glycolysis actually means? Glyco refers to glucose and lysis means break. Glycolysis is the breakdown of glucose molecules into two molecules of pyruvate, or we call it as pyruvic acid, catalyzed by respiratory enzymes. It releases less energy to produce two molecules of adenosine triphosphate, the ATP. So, cellular respiration always starts with glycolysis in the cytoplasm. From there, the two pathways are determined by the presence of oxygen. If there's no oxygen available, anaerobic respiration will take place. But anaerobic respiration is not actually very good at making ATP. It relies on the two ATP made from glycolysis. But if oxygen is available, Aerobic respiration will occur in the mitochondria and it's an ATP producing machine. A lot of ATP will be produced from there. Okay, next we will see the oxidation of pyruvate. Now, in the presence of oxygen, pyruvate that is formed in the cytoplasm will go into the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, Pyruvate is broken down in a series of biochemical reactions with the presence of oxygen into inorganic molecules which are carbon dioxide, water and lots of energy. The oxidation of two pyruvate molecules can produce up to 38 molecules of ATP and oh boy, that's a lot. So, in short, glycolysis and the oxidation of pyruvate is important in aerobic respiration. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm and the oxidation of pyruvate occurs in the mitochondria. Glucose will be broken down into pyruvate and then into carbon dioxide, water and energy. The energy release is equivalent to approximately 2,898 kJ per mole. That is 2,898 kJ energy 
release when one mole or we call it 180 gram of glucose reacts with oxygen in a standard way. Heat energy is used to maintain body temperature while the ATP is the main form of chemical energy used in cellular metabolic reaction. So, all types of living organism uses energy in the form of ATP, correct? Without ATP, the organisms will die. Only a small amount of ATP is stored in the body cells of the organism. And hence, ATP must be continuously produced for the survival of the organism. Okay, so how is ATP formed? ATP is formed when inorganic phosphate group combines with adenosine diphosphate to phosphate by using energy from glucose breakdown. Okay. So the ATP molecules that contains the phosphate bond can be broken easily to release energy. So now when the cell needs immediate supply of energy for cellular activities such as muscle contraction, the ATP, I put it here as A and then triple P. So this bond over here can be broken down. Okay, so again, I repeat, when the cell needs immediate supply of energy for cellular activities such as muscle contraction, the ATP molecule will break down into ADP and phosphate molecules and the stored energy is then released to be used by the cells. So, in summary, ADP plus the phosphate group and energy from the glucose breakdown can form ATP. And the same ATP then can be break, broken down into ADP, phosphate groups, and also energy to be used in the cell. So ATP is basically an energy carrier. Okay, so that's all. So um, to understand more on aerobic respiration, you can actually scan the code given in your textbook on page 115 to watch a video link on YouTube to enhance your understanding. I'm sure you'll understand better the process of glycolysis that is shown in this video. So, once you are done with all that, you need to answer questions from Formative Practice 7.2 to test your understanding, as usual. So, the questions are such. Number one, state the meaning of aerobic respiration. Number two, suggest another substrate apart from glucose that can be used by cell for cellular respiration. Number three, state the word equation for aerobic respiration. And lastly, describe the process involved in aerobic respiration to produce energy. Do this question and test your understanding. If you can do all these four questions, then voila, you have mastered subtopic 7.2. With that, I will end my video here. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. Bye-bye.